Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. In the last episode, we were questioning Luke at me after we interrupted his trial and we're trying to prove that he is not Masked to Mask, but in fact is the killer of Kane Bullard. I think we're coming pretty close, so uh, we might be done with this trial in this episode actually with this case. Uh, so let's see. Let's continue on. All right, uh, so can we do it? Can we prove it? Never mind who moved it. The real question is why did they move it? Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you are prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? Who, you say? Um... Of course it was Luke at me. The one who moved the statue is none other than Luke at me. I wish it would have been funny. <laughs> it would have been like points. And he's like, Luke at him. But they're like, what? I'm like, uh, I mean, <clears throat> Luke at me. Uh, that's his name. But yeah, Luke at him. Yeah, okay. And then he's like, oh, my, my joke failed <laughs> in front of everybody. <laughs> Come now, Sir Lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? Hey, hey! I am not delusional, sir. It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple. However... Why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue. Here's where our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move that statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Uh-huh. We're on to you. Look at me. You pretended to be mask to mask to create an alibi by showing you were at Lord Lee Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you move the statue. A single fatal flaw. Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Just where in this photo, oh, picture, not photo, <laughs> whatever, does this lie exist? Well, the lie is actually right here, the time. Do you remember what uh, Adrian said about when the statue arrived? Naturally, the lie in this photo is the time stamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Atme went to KB Security and murdered Kane Bullard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at Lordly Taylor at this time. Uh. <laughs> mumble mumble. <laughs> but what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember if you will, Your Honor. When was this statue placed besides the warehouse door? Well... The statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime. And it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke Atme had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so, in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. What the? <clears throat> Sometimes my good old voice turns into the judge voice because I get like this rasp. It's funny. Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ugh. So, on the day of the crime, Mr. Abney must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Wait, what? 
This doesn't make any sense, Phoenix. What are you talking about? A long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory. What the heck? <laughs> Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke Gatney had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been in his photo. Oh, snap, yo. <laughs> We're getting it. Yes. Order, order. Mr. Atme, is this true? One moment, your honor. H have you forgotten this? Uh, what's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. Mm -mm. Hmm, it's true that the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor's staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed, allowed you to tamper with the data. Ooh! Ah! Uh, uh. <laughs> we got him. Order, order! Mr. Godot, what is the meaning of this? Godot's like, don't ask me, man. <laughs> Godot! I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. Finally, grow a backbone against Godot. Nice, Judge, nice. My eleventh cup. I've promised to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. <laughs> Godot, it's like, we don't care about what freaking coffee you're on. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> However, the defense has a very good point. A good point? So what? We are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. Dude, no more of your BS! Come on! Um, I think you've got your points mixed up with your other points. So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time? and that the statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea. However, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is? That it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe can never reach their dreams. Dude, <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> Th that's very true. N no way! Don't fall for that, your honor, please! Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Mask Damask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. <sighs> Yes, please provide this court with your testimony about your plan to steal the sacred urn. Darn. <sighs> know how to drag this out. I first received the request from Lord D. Taylor about 20 days ago. The urn was placed in a box and Zavari, it was then sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I sent my card ten days beforehand. It's not that valuable, bro. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I had the urn in my hands for the first time at 1am on October 12th. Alright, hmm. That's pretty much all stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time? Zavari. Very well then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. 
All right. In other words, we gotta press. Draw it out of him. Okay. You were asked to guard the urn by Miss Adrian Andrews, is that right? Indeed. It seemed that they had heard of my Zavakling. What? <laughs> okay, I'm just getting used to the Zavari, but now it's Zavarkling. Like sparkling? Zvarkling? Sparkling? <laughs> I'm like, what the? <laughs> Zvarkling. Reputation. I see Miss Andrews is still attracting the weirdos. Oh my god. You'd better watch out too, Maya. <laughs> okay, Ern was placed in the box and Javari. Okay. You mean this box? Yes, that pathetic box. Why are y'all hating on Maya's box, man? Leave it alone. Lady Andrews was especially taken with that urn. And she wouldn't let anyone enter the storeroom. Not even me. Huh. Interesting new tidbit. Okay, I'm not able to see it until the day of the crime. So you're sure that you had never seen the urn before? Indeed. You may ask Lady Andrews to confirm for yourself. My security was focused entirely on the entrance to that warehouse. However, I, look at me, let no information whatsoever slip through my fingers. But it's not valuable! Not technically, I mean, you know. You mean this calling card? That's right, that is without a doubt my calling card. I guess Mr. Delight didn't make this after all. Of course, because Amy knew about the emblem. Making this card authentic would have been child's play to him. When Hale secured by himself. Hmm. <laughs> then no one entered the basement warehouse? Unfortunately, there were many different treasures being taken there. Both for a period of approximately five days. People were indeed going in and out of the warehouse. <sighs> Let's see how the earnings are. Okay, let's hear. And this is the photo that proves that, huh? Indeed. To be honest, even if a photo was taken. I didn't think it would matter terribly much. Hey Nick, if this photo is a fake, Detective Atme might have stolen the urn whenever this was taken. That's true. You know, he's been saying that he never saw the urn until that night. If we can prove that he's lying there, we can wrap this up and put a bow on it. Let's take a good hard look at the court record. Huh, not a lot to go on, is there? The detective's been covering his tracks. There's only one thing we need to prove in this cross-examination. That he took this photo well before the actual night of the crime. Alright then, how do we do that? There's one thing that Amy stated very clearly. That he had never seen the urn before he stole it. We need to prove that he's lying. Okay. Um, I didn't really... Let's see, what do we have? Um, what does this say? To the security at Lordly Taylor, I will be coming to purloin the most priceless work of art on display in your treasures of Korean. Take good care of the speckled urn, won't you? Speckled, huh? Hmm. I think it's not this one. It's, uh... To the day of the crime. But, uh, look at that. Objection. There we go. I knew you was lying, fool. Mr. Atme, if you really are masked to mask, 
Then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Mask to Mask had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now, the speckled here surely refers to this pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that is true. But so what? Truth be told, there is no way that Mask to Mask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lord D. Taylor. Uh, I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day that the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken due to human error. Or should I say, an error-prone human. Aw, poor Adrian. And that's when the pink paints got on the urn. Ugh, you, you can't be serious. And yet, this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means, Detective Abney had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when this fake photo was taken. <laughs> Wasting your precious coffee there, Godot. And because this photo is a fake, your alibi for the night of the murder no longer holds water. Booyah! <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> nice. We've almost got him. We've almost got him. We've almost got him. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Alright, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. Huh? Oh, no. Darn you, Godot. Huh. It's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. C conviction you say? Yesterday we all decided unanimously that this man was masked to mask. And now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? Oh dear. That's a good point. No way. Don't fall for that too, your honor. <laughs> You say that Luke Gatme was the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? <laughs> An excellent point. We still don't know. Motive, Mr. Wright. Motive. Mind you, my merry murder is motive manifest. Okay, Mr. Alliterative. No more, please. Nick! He's getting a second wind! If he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Rondelite as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Rondelite. Isn't that right, Detective? Indeed. According to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Not that that has stopped other prosecutors from uh, pinning, pointing the finger at my clients before. They have done it without clear motive. That's kind of a... Uh, that's a little hypocritical, don't you think? Hmm? 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 I feel triggered right now. <laughs> now then, maybe you can enlighten us to what the defendant's motives were. Thank you, sir, old timer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. Ah! Alright, let's try to prove this motive. 
I, do cut me, I have no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Buller decided to investigate Mask the Mask and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Buller who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron the Life. And it was again Mr. Buller who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Buller's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Mask the Mask. That is why Mr. Delight saw it fit to kill Miss Kane Bullard. Truly a tragedy. So the victim, Kane Bullard, blackmailed the defendant. Well, that's kind of what we've been saying, maybe. This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. A handwriting test confirms that Mr. Bullard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. What? Oh, okay. Very well, Mr. Wright. Begin your course examination. Hmm. Okay, what are we gonna say now? Let's see. No point of contact with the victim whatsoever, did he? Ah, uh, what we got? Blackmail letter. Anything else? If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. 50,000. If you don't, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. <gasps> oh! Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hold on, let's see. Um. Timbers, uh, to who he was. Send it to Ron Delight. <sighs> Which one is it? Is he again, I read a grudge for his betrayal. He's a little friend and truly believes he's messed up. Oh, which one do I need to present this on? You mean this blackmail letter right here? It says bring $50,000. And the handwriting is, without a doubt, the victim's. There is no mistake. We have an official report to prove it. But I don't see an addressee on this letter anywhere. An addressee? This letter was discovered in Ron Delight's apartment. And Mr. Delight did show up at the designated place and time. The fact that there is no addressee is irrelevant. I don't think so, bruh. I wonder. What's up, Nick? I just had a thought. What if that blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight? Whoa! Do you have any evidence of that? For some reason, I just can't shake the feeling that there's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? Okay, I think that's the right one, so let's try it. Alright, let's try it. Objection! Let's do this! Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective At Me? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. C contradiction I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. Oh, you be quiet, sir. <laughs> You're one to talk, exactly. At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? You want me to punch you? I will gladly punch you, sir. <laughs> Fight game. Tur if, if I had my way, this Ace Attorney game would turn it to a fighting game right now. Ugh, I would, I would totally beat up Godot. And I would beat up all the other pain in the butt um, killers and like Larry and other people who annoy me. <laughs> Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. Ah, contradicting evidence? In the letter? Wait. 
Do I have to present the letter? Hold on. What's this? Uh, publicity photo. Um... Mm. No. In the letter? I... Do I present the letter? I'm... I'm confused. What? Okay. <laughs> they should... They should just said, uh, present the letter again <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> huh. A little two-one punch like that wouldn't even phase me. I think you mean one-two punch. <laughs> Mr. Wright, try thinking things through a little more but Wait, what? Before I'm finding fault with- Okay, so I was pre- I sure felt that punch, Your Honor. Anyway, let's try reading the blackmail letter one more time. It's got to be something off about it. Wait, what? Please proceed with your testimony. I was- No! What? Send it to Ron Delight. Wait, you present the blackmail letter, then what? Hold on. I'm salty right now. What am I supposed to... Contradiction. Oh, I think I know. Hold on. I remember now. Ah, uh, so annoying. Okay, okay. It's it's in here. That the they're talking about this. That it's blue, not red. Ugh, so confusing. I got it. Sorry, I was confused. I thought I had to point up, pin, point out the specific line, but I think that's the next step. There I go, jumping ahead. Okay. Um, take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is this jewel's color. Color? I'm not much for discussing color myself. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. Red? Which means... The red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Eminon that Mask the Mask stole at all. Okay, I'm on the right track again. Phew. And your point is, Mr. Trite. So you are trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, game, please. <laughs> Alright, well, that will be it for today's episode. I thought I'd be able to finish this case right now. Um, but it's, it's going on a little long. But I feel like I'm so close. You know what? Screw it. Uh, let's just keep going. I want to finish this. This is going to be a longer one, guys. I hope I'm right about this. <laughs> uh, no, this might be too long. Never mind. <laughs> I think it will be too, too long. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the next one might be really short then. I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye!